Welcome back to another Catfish Chalk Talk. Can you believe it? We're already in week eight of these Chalk Talks. The feedback has been fantastic. I'm trying to get to the questions. We want to stick to one small topic each week. But if you notice, the chalkboard is gone right now. And that's because this week's topic is a hot one. It's one that's been basically contested for as long as I can remember. It's one that I'm constantly futzing with, trying to figure out better ways to combat it, and that's barometer. Now, my theories might be a little different than most, but you're, there's really very little to read or hear on barometer and how to fish against it or with it. Um, you go on to talk forums, you can see all kinds of stuff on barometer, low falling barometers, high falling barometer, uh, fish's air bladder fills up, whatever. Here's what we know. You get a big front where the bottom falls out of the barometer, chances are fishing's going to be tough. Agreed? Agreed. Now, this whole barometer drops, air air bladders and the whole thing and the fish goes to a certain level and you got to find that certain level. I've come to the conclusion that that is absolutely a load of bunk. Now in my thoughts and research, and I'm going to flat out tell you right now, I have no scientific evidence for this, but a gentleman once said to me on a guide trip, there's just so many things about animals and fish that we don't understand. You know what? That's true. So in my basically seven years of watching this and, what, and paying attention to it, what I've come to the conclusion with is barometer is nothing more than an indicator of a positive or negative. If you actually take that a step further, barometer generally is an indicator of what the sun is doing. So in a lot of cases, the fish, the deer, the animals, they follow the sun. So here's what I've come up with to be quick and dirty about the explanation. When you have a big storm coming, the weatherman's telling you about it three, three, four days in advance, and the fishing just gets better and better and better and better until the storm passes and it quits, maybe there's something in their instincts that told them that there's a negative coming, you gotta prepare. So after the storm passes, even if it's a, not necessarily a big front, Maybe they just go down and sulk because they're full. Now, I've seen this time and time again. On a daily basis, you have fronts moving through. Some affect the bite for a few minutes. Some affect the bite for a few hours. But I'm speaking for now for simplicity about the really big ones. Have you noticed that when those really big storms are coming, the catfishing gets better and better and better? And you're seeing a lot of deer around during the day? Now, up here in the north, when there's a big blizzard getting ready to come, you see deer all day long out in the fields. When that blizzard hits... Those deer are in the woods. You don't see them until a couple, three days later after everything passes. So those deer knew something was about to happen, and they were preparing for the negative. So there's a very big indicator to this. There's a couple of adjustments we can do to solve it. One being get out of current if you're fishing a river. Get off the beaten path because the fish are just laying there sulking. Sit on your fish a little bit harder. Anticipate that they're not going to be as aggressive because there's just no need to feed at that particular point and then as everything settles out that's generally going to bring on a better bite. Now here's something I've been using if you've been to one of my catfish universities which by the way we have a catfish university coming up in Des Moines March 17th you can sign up or get more information at catfishuniversity.com but if you've been to one of my catfish universities in the last four or five years one of the stories I tell and I'm going to tell it right now is imagine your family at Thanksgiving dinner everybody gets around the table and you're eating turkey and dressing and potatoes and everything you can stuff down your gullet and over to the side you got a kids table and they're eating a little bit of their food and they want to go play with their cousins so they're gone they eat a little and they disappear hence after a storm these little fish tend to be the first ones to come out now you get done you walk into the living room lay down on the couch and you're gonna watch the cowboys or the lions play if someone walked up to the coffee table after you just picked out at Thanksgiving dinner and put a big plate of mashed potatoes down, you're going to do absolutely nothing because you're full. Now, Thanksgiving is generally a positive, not a negative, but the point is you just picked out. 
you're full. You're not going to eat it. Hence, if you're fishing, you're laying there. You're not going to eat it. You know, you might put some bait down there and let it sit a little longer. Maybe somebody will start picking at it. Now, if you put a piece of pumpkin pie on that coffee table, you might not just jump right up and start chowing down on it, but you're certainly going to look at it. You're certainly going to decide, hey, that's something I kind of want, and hey, it's Thanksgiving, and eventually you're going to get to it. This is kind of how I operate with the big fronts. You know, I don't believe necessarily that the barometer is messing with the fish themselves, but I do believe that something in their instincts is telling them there's a negative coming and they have to prepare for it. And if you follow that basic, you'll find that fronts are not as big of a problem as one might think. Now, this is just one small piece of the puzzle, and we'll be talking about it in the months to come. Uh, if you want to read more about this, it's written extensively in Cracking the Channel Catfish Code, available on Amazon at Bottom Dwellers Tackle or at Catfish Connection. Thanks for watching these Catfish Chalk Talks, this particular one without a chalkboard. Until next time, from up here on the Frozen Red, I'm Brad Durek.